O God, who provided full salvation, who provided salvation full and free, we, your grateful people, come to worship you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shall we rise for the opening hymn? Cameraman Celestina Zul to open in a word of prayer first, Brother Zul. Lord, we give you thanks this morning for being our Heavenly Father, for being our King, for being a God who has established the foundations of the earth for your purpose. Lord, this morning, as we glorify you in this manner. We simply ask that our hearts be open and our minds be prepared to receive whatever message you have for us. May we put aside all distractions and may we glorify you in spirit and truth wholeheartedly. We ask all this in your son's holy and most precious name. Amen. 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 And welcome, welcome once again to Open Door Believers Chapel. We continue to remind you weekly when you come here that we are a Plymouth Brethren Assembly. We're not a pastor-centered church. We are governed by a body of local elders whom you should know by now. And our chief purpose is proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom to know is eternal life. Nothing can 
Behold, I 
Straight from Psalm 95. saying it but we're in deep trouble some of us don't know what to do check out the words of this song and let it be a real encouragement to you Say to those who are fearful hearted, do not be afraid. The Lord your God is strong and with his mighty arms when you call out his name. you 
He's always, always waiting on our cry. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. Always waiting on the next call to save us. Brother Nathan Scott, member of our worship team, will now lead us in our declaration. The declaration is a congregational reading for the morning. It is when we offer back to God his holy word in worship. And so I like to tell people, it is the most important aspect of our worship service. Brother Nathan. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have a few moments for silent reflection.
church has been started. I have watched young men grow. They come out. Go to college. Go to high school. The next thing they take unto themselves a wife. Then the next thing they have a family. Such as our speaker today. But you know, they have really grown. And now He's one of the dependable men we can depend on to share the word with us. You see, the brethren is a unique assembly, a gathering of people. I like to explain it because sometimes people come, they just sit on there. You know, not every morning we announce it. This is not a pastor centered church. We depend on the families gathered here to continue the work. The men especially, to spend time with the word of God. That they can not only build their family, but build the extended family of the assembly. And today we call on our speaker, one such young man, with the Kirkland the Smith. With all the explanation, one of my son told me, Granddad pretty much call you old. <laughs> 25 years, come from junior college. Build family and all that thing. So the man, they call me old. So, but that's all right. Uh, the passage this morning, taken from Isaiah 40. This book, written by the prophet Isaiah, is a, one of the major prophets, unveils the full dimension of God's judgment and salvation. In fact, throughout this book, God's judgment is referred to as fire. Isaiah wrote during a turbulent period in Israel's history. 
the Assyrian Empire was expanding rapidly and these people have come up before. They were known for their brutality when it comes to their enemies. The greatness of Israel pretty much had declined. All the glory days of King David, the peace under King Solomon was only a memory. And there were two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. Israel's history was one with no righteous kings. And Judah had a mix of righteous and wicked kings. Judah witnessed the judgment of Israel when they were conquered by the Assyrians and scattered. This made Judah vulnerable. And even they were threatened by the Assyrians. And we remember the story of King Hezekiah who he prayed earnestly and Isaiah predicted that God will force the Assyrians to withdraw from the city. Nevertheless, Isaiah warned Judah that her sin would bring captiv captivity at the hands of Babylon. He also predicted the restoration of the people from captivity. God would redeem his people from Babylon just as he had rescued them from Egypt. Isaiah predicts the rise of Cyrus the, the Persian, who would, who would unite the Medes and Persians and conquer Babylon. And the decree of Cyrus would allow the Jews to return home, a deliverance that prefigured the greater salvation from sin through Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we look into your word, we pray that your spirit will take control, that we will allow you to speak to us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we pretty much got a, a little history lesson in a nutshell. And over the past months, the focus has been on the attributes of God who he is to us and throughout history. The book of Isaiah is divided in two big parts. The first 39 chapters is pretty much a book of judgment. And then beginning with chapter 40 to the end is a book of comfort. God tells us that this will happen when we don't obey. However, there is also comfort of restoration, redemption, and peace that he promises people if they obey. This passage, this passage is not meant to give God a passing glance. A lot of times, when we think about God, we don't really reflect on how great he is. In fact, here we are invited, the people of Israel are invited to behold your God. It speaks of a study, a deep reflection, a mission to know the greatness and the character of our God. This passage is also a rebuke because it rebukes the small ideas we have of God. And it counters all the things we like to imagine about God. Like, we think about God many times like each other, like people. And we tend to view ourselves as larger than life. We, we, we adore and we praise individuals, human beings, and have them on pedestals that are bigger than life. But then... The tendency is to have a small view of God. So this human-centered thinking puts God second and people first. But the passage here gives, a like, like many passages the scripture, it gives a different picture of how people, of how we 
are to approach God. And Isaiah is telling us, he's saying, Behold your God. Here is your God. And he reveals in this passage five aspects of God to behold. The first one, behold the returning Lord. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. One aspect of God, of our God, should be to behold the fact that of his return. God will return to this earth. And when he comes back, he comes with power, with a strong hand, an arm that shall rule. The Lord God shall come. When the Lord comes back, he comes to award his people because his reward is with them. He comes to inspect his work and his work before him. This is something important for us to know about our God. That he will return a just God. Behold our God. Behold God of all comfort. He is the loving shepherd. And he has loving care. Because he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom. And gently those who are with young. The Gospel of John described Jesus as the good shepherd. He is good, he is good in his care and also in his sacrifice for his flock. Lovingly cradles them in his bosom. And what do we think about to get the, the maximum or the really deep expression of human feelings and emotions. I mean, you, the Lord can, or like, like the shepherd, and when you're carrying someone, you can throw them on your shoulder and carry them around and things like that, but you don't really feel the gist of the emotions and feelings. Like when they put you in the bosom, when you put a child, a baby in the bosom, because that bosom is the area where humans' greatest feelings are. And that is how important we are to our God. We are so special, so important that he keeps us close, close to the greatest feelings that humans could ever experience, close to his heart. He got us his lamb with his arm. The youngest, the weakest are not despised. They are given special care by the Lord. He first actively gathers them and will carry them in his bosom. The seat where a, mother's, a mother would nurse a child and lays it to sleep or comforts the child. Think about that. When our children are young, when they're in pain and we comfort them, we don't just say, ah, baby, all right, go sleep. Or get any medicine. No, we, we keep them close. We're close to the Lord like that. He doesn't cast us aside. And this is important for us to know because the Lord knows that his people will suffer and will need his comforting presence. Behold the God, your God, over all creation. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? What do you think about the hollow of the hand? All the waters that we could ever think about in the known universe. He holds it in the hollow of his hand. Imagine cup of hand. I mean, one of, the, one of the things that you try, and I always try it at home, out of illness, you try to see how, if you can hold water in your hand. You can't hold water in your hand. It quickly spills out all through the water finds space to escape but the lord holds it we try to hold it in two hands right just a description here how great he is that he holds it in the hollow of his hand and that's not all either he measured the heavens with a span 
Now in mathematics, when we introduce the topic of measurement, we, start, we first start with a, li a little history, how we came about with measurement, how we hold the uh, um, meters and inches and yards came about. And if you did math with in first form, they tell us that the measurement begins with hu our ancient human beings using their body parts. When they talk about span, span is right here from a tip of your middle finger to the base, to where the wrist is. So that is a span when they will measure. And the scripture is telling us that God, our God, measures the heavens with a span. And when you talk about the universe, when scientists talk about the immenseness of the universe, how great the universe is, how trillions and trillions upon trillions of stars and so many trillions of light years when it comes to the distance and how vast this is. And people who look to creation and talk about, oh, you know, this will happen if the universe allows, if the star aligns. So they are seeking and looking after the wrong, the creation, rather than the one who measure it in a span, in a span. And he calculate the dust of the earth in a measure. You ever try count the dust that you see around? No, we can't even count the grains of sun, much less, but he knows all of that. So this is another aspect of our God to be whole, how great he is, that he has authority over all creation. He's so great and he's dominant over all creation. He measures the waters and everything he knows to the atom, if we'll use it as a measure. So he's not just a being who is a big giant. So large at the waters, you know, he can put them in his hand. No, this is just a picture to help all of us imagine how great our God is. He's not a human being. He's a spirit. He doesn't have a body as we have bodies. As John, would, John said in, in chapter 4. So this is a, just a picture of how we can understand what the prophet Isaiah is telling us. God is so great. He's so dominant over all creation that we should stand in awe of his power and his glory. In fact, he knows exactly how many hair is on your head. The grains of sun. So we, we don't try to count that. Right? You go crazy. Every day, if I don't go to the barber and it goes like this, I see Ali here, Ali's trying to hear around. Right? There's a cat around. Sometimes you see this, the hair, the fur around. God knows everything. All of that. He's so great a whole immense our God is. Behold our God. Behold your God. Behold the God of all wisdom. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor has taught him? With whom did he take counsel? Who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and show, showed him the way of understanding? All the great leaders of, in history and those we might look up to. All of them, they need counselors around. They need people who would advise them. And sometimes when our leaders say certain things, we wonder, who is advising them or counseling them? We have to question it. But not our God. He does not need a counselor. He doesn't need anyone to give him advice because he himself is the source of all wisdom and counsel. His, he has raw intelligence to know how much dust is on the earth, how heavy the mountains and hills are, but more than that, he has the wisdom to use that knowledge. But yet, he needs no counsel, no instruction, no teacher, no one to show him anything. But his wisdom is also unsearchable. And no one, no creature, 
can capture all the information ever. No one could do what God has done. And no one can undo his purposes. He doesn't need our assistance. It is through his spirit, his word, that he created everything as the reading this morning. Number five. Behold, the God whose greatness surpasses all things in comparison. God's greatness surpasses all nations. We look at the times today. Different conflicts happening in the world and all the nations they are showing their military might. They have military parades to show how many bombs they have, how many tanks they have, how many planes they have to instill fear in their enemies. And that's not anything new. The ancient people, they did the same. All of them show, show their might to, uh, to intimidate the enemy. And at times, in many times, they even intimidate us, the Lord's people. They intimidated Israel. But, what, the, what does Isaiah say about them? These nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as small dust on, ski, on the scales. So we need to pay mind to dust when dust is in the air unless the, the bus or a vehicle fly past and a whole heat kick up or we have to breathe it in where we try to run to stay, stay healthy. All the nations, brothers and sisters, are nothing before him. They are regarded by him as less than nothing and meaningless. I remember in the early years, we used to tease each other, especially when we play sports. And one of the statements we would make to each other would be like, Why? Why you are nothing? That is the same thing. And Isaiah is saying it right here, right? These nations, they are nothing. In fact, you have nothing, and then you have them. That's how great our God is, and he cannot be compared. So when you think about those huge display of strength, all they are doing, they are fulfilling the Lord's purposes. And the Lord used the nations to bless Israel and to judge Israel when they are disobedient. You see how great our God is that Isaiah emphasized, Behold your God. Behold your God. There is nothing, no one to compare to him. He doesn't need anyone. And that is one of the phrases we you have been using throughout these months. He doesn't need anyone. But all of us, all the nations, execute his purposes and his plans. And these nations who are demonstrating how powerful they are, they can't resist God's plans and God's purposes. In fact, brothers and sisters, how much more rewarding it is for you to carry out God's plans and God's purposes, let him use you, for his will and be rewarded in the end than to carry out, still carry out his purposes and his plans and yet and then face destruction. I think I want to go the first route. Let the Lord use me for his purposes and he using us, he still rewards us. That like in the double PAO. I wish some workplaces would do that. <laughs> but this great God, who is all wise, who holds the universe in his hands, who is the creator of everything, who, is, who no one can compare to, still seeks us out. As our brothers express in their prayers, he still seeks us out. We wicked people.
Jeremiah tells us that no one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not fear you, kings of the nation? This is your due among all the wise leaders of the nations and all their kingdoms. There is none, no one like you. But yet, this great God seeks us. He loves us so much that he sent his only son through whom we have salvation. Imagine, how can we, you know, how can we sinful people fall in? Could be counted as special to our God. And that is because of his son Jesus Christ, who died for us. So we don't need to fear anything or anyone. Remember the God we serve. How immense he is. Don't be intimidated by what's happening around. Don't be intimidated by all the needs that we have. Do not forget the God we serve. Behold, church, your God. And if you don't know the God we serve, you can do that through Jesus Christ's Son. Because through him, all of us are declared righteous. Let us pray. Lord, there are so many ways we can describe you. When we think about how great and how awesome we are, many times we limit ourselves because that's just our nature. We can only imagine so far. But Lord, help us to remember the God we serve. Behold our God, the one who owns everything, who rules over everything, who created all things and holds everything in his hands. Thank you, Lord, that despite your greatness, Despite you not needing anybody, any counsel, despite all of that, you still love us human beings. We are special to you. And you will tell us that you put hold us close to your heart. Thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus Christ who died for us. That we can be called sons and daughters, joint heirs. And we can, we can experience your love. And the blessing of your salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. God bless you.